Many ancient torture devices are really cruel and creative at the same time. For example, this beautiful girl with open arms. Do you feel the urge to hug her? If you really think so, you might die in her arms. The following I'll show you some of the deadly torture devices in ancient times. However, the following content may contain uncomfortable images. Please watch with caution. Now we'll continue with the girl from the beginning. This thing is called Aipiga. It's not a pretty face, but underneath its robes. The inside of Aipiga's arms are covered with sharp brass spikes. If the activation plate on his chest is touched, the spiked arms will quickly close. This could result in stab wounds to the upper limbs. In the worst case, it would pierce one's heart and send him to hell. It is said that in order to achieve the desired effect, the victim would be made drunk in advance, in order to make people think that Spica is a real person and fall into a deadly embrace. But to prevent the victim from escaping, the arms had to be strong, and there was no such thing as a spring. So the brilliant Greeks, relying on a piece of wood to provide elasticity and the principle of the lever arm, they created a bear trap-like clamping device with a short arm at the front and an extra long lever arm at the back. We all know that the longer the lever arm, the less force is required, and when a person is caught in the shorter arm, it's very difficult to push the arm away. But one disadvantage of Pika is that she has to stand with her back against the wall to hide the long wall of levers behind it. It's said that the ancient Spartan tyrant Nabes used this torture device to punish reluctant patrons. Apart from Epiga, this bronze bull is also very creative. The execution required the opening of a trap door in the back of the bull and throw the victim into the belly of the bull. Then you lock the lid and build a fire under the belly of the bull. The fire will slowly burn the victim to death. The victim could only breathe through a copper tube in the bull's head. And at the same time, he would scream like he was being burned, but the sound could not penetrate the metal. The sound could only be accompanied by an exhalation. Through the tube, a low-frequency roar is produced. It sounds like a bull in a rage, although the man who invented the bull was brilliant, but he didn't end well. It is said that the then-tyrant Ferraris wanted to test the effect of the bull's music. He made the inventor of the bull the first victim. After that, Anyone who challenged the tyrant's authority was thrown into the bull and burned. Even listening to the bull's roar became the entertainment at parties, and in order to cover up the smell of burnt human flesh, herbs were added to the bull. It's an extreme form of cruelty, like executing a criminal by fire. There was more than just the bull. Legend has it that there was a form of torture called the Wicker Man. They could execute dozens or hundreds of people at a time. The ancient Celts would tie thieves and prisoners of war to giant wicker men and burn them alive as a sacrifice to pray for a good harvest. And death wasn't really the scary part for the victim. It's the waiting for it that's scary. In addition to the burns, there's inhalation choking, which causes swelling of the windpipe, and eventually the body would be dried out. It's a very painful process. But some people think the wicker man doesn't exist. The reason is that it was very difficult to weave a huge wicker man to be burned at that time. It was once tested. A six to seven meter wicker man could only fit three people at the same time. If the load was increased, it would easily collapse when burned. So to weave a wicker man that could hold hundreds of people, you can imagine how much work it would be. Maybe the ancients burned criminals on poles, but it was later exaggerated into a giant wicker man. I'm sure you're all familiar with this torture device. It's the Roman crucifixion. This kind of punishment is simple and brutal, using only the simplest gravity to make the victim die in the most inhumane way. The Roman cross consists of two parts, shaped like a capital T. It's not a cross as we know it. The first part is a wooden tune fixed in the ground. It's about 2.7 to 3.6 meters high. One three of it is a wooden tune fixed in the ground, can be used repeatedly. The second part is a beam, 1.8 meters long. 
During the execution, the victim's arms were first nailed to the beam. Then the victim will be hung up with the beam to the tenon of the wooden tune. Under the force of gravity, the victim would experience severe pain from the wounds and the wind and the sun. But nowadays, scientists are still debating the location of the arm spikes. Some scholars believe that the nail was driven between the pubic bone and the radius bone. Although this type of fixation is relatively stable, it can easily endure a person's arteries and cause a quick death. So it doesn't serve the purpose of torture. That's why some people believe that the nails were driven into the palms of the hands and that the hands were tied with ropes to prevent the victim from pulling off the nails and escaping. In addition to the arms, the victim's legs would be nailed to the frame. The victim's body is completely immobilized. Imagine the pain. But the victim did not die of pain. They died of suffocation because the weight of the crucified person's body was concentrated on the wrists. This tension would compress the diaphragm so that the victim could only breathe in and not out. Crucifixion was usually used to execute rebels and slaves, but it became a Christian symbol symbolizing God's love and salvation for the world. Next, let's look at a flexible torture device. It's a very simple structure. It's a cylinder made of two wagon wheels combined with wooden planks. During the execution, the victim would be tied face out on the surface of the wheel. Then the wheels were rolled down a hill by gravity. The subject will be repeatedly hit by the ground. Each impact is equivalent to a car accident, and gravity will continue to accelerate the wheel. The force of the impact will be greater and greater. In the end, the victim would have no chance of surviving. Later, a new version of the wheel was developed. The wheel would be turned by a handle. The victim would be rolled over a fire or a bed of nails. It was a slow and painful death. And finally, the most massive of all the torture devices. It's the 48-meter-high Colosseum. This building was constructed with 12 million pounds of concrete. The underground was filled with complex mechanisms and an advanced elevation system. The Romans would throw prisoners and slaves inside and unleash fierce beasts like tigers and lions. And the arena hid 28 trapdoors underneath. The tortured would never know where the beasts jumped out from. Their trapdoor elevators were manually operated. Efforts are made to tighten the ropes by pushing on the pillars and to reduce the weight by relying on pulley blocks so that the cages can be pulled up quickly. Once the cage is raised to its designated position, by releasing another rope, the lock that holds the trapdoor open, the beast would then jump through the tilted trapdoor into the arena and fight to the death with the torturer. It's estimated that the Colosseum caused the deaths of half a million people in 400 years. This makes it the most murderous torture device in history. After looking at these instruments of torture, which one do you think is the most brutal?